Hi folks, this is Al with a BombBuilds.com build tip. If you're an amateur fabricator like me, then probably the only thing smaller than your workshop is your budget to buy new tools. If your project requires sheet metal bends, then you probably already know that sheet metal bending brakes can be very large and very expensive. If your project requires long bends, or a lot of bends, you're probably best to work with your local fabricator. But if your project requires just some short bends, there are techniques that you can use so you can bend those parts yourself. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. So let's get started. Let's just say in this first example we start off with a 4 inch wide piece of 035 thick aluminum. Scribing my bend line, I stick it into the vise, putting the bend line precisely at the top of the vise where the jaws come together. And with something this thin, I can bend this relatively easy and cleanly, even by hand. If I want to sharpen up that bend line, I can hit it with a rubber mallet. And I can end up with a pretty reasonable bend. However, as we get thicker and we start to get into steel, this becomes more and more difficult. This is that same example with a 4 inch wide piece of steel of the same thickness. I'm going to put it in my vise with the bend line in place, clamp it down securely. And this time I'm going to struggle just a little bit more to get this steel bent down into position. And again I'm going to sharpen up that bend with my rubber mallet. And although more difficult, I have a successful bend. Here we have an eighth inch thick piece of steel that's also four inches wide and let's see how far we can get. Can we bend this piece or have we reached our limit? I'll clamp it in the vise like I did before and yeah, yeah uh, it's just not going to happen. So I think from here on out we're going to have to use some other technique. Let's take a look at those. In order to get our 8 inch thick steel to bend, we're going to use a magnetic mounted vice brake. This one's available for, through Harbor Freight. Um, this one actually has removable sections so we can do fancier bends if we need to, but in this case we're just going to put these vice jaws on. We have a female and male die here. They simply go on magnetically. And we're going to take that same piece now and we're going to line it up in this vice, align the bend line perfectly with the pointed end of the male jaw, the male die. And then I just turn my vise. <clears throat> Even with the vise jaws, it is still very, very difficult for this thickness of steel. And through some muscle and these magnetic vise jaws, I'm actually able to make a pretty nice bend. Bending that last piece of eighth inch thick steel, we definitely exceeded the capacity of this uh, vice brake. As you can see, it's 16 gauge uh, maximum capacity. So we don't recommend doing that too much. Uh, you should probably refrain from that. But let's take a look at this same uh, brake vice using uh, material of the thickness specified. And we're going back to the 60,000 steel. 60 thousandths thick and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put this in along the bend line and operate my vise. And of course now it's much more reasonable. I want to bend this slightly over 90 because these bends will tend to spring back. And what I end up here with is a nice bend with a nice sharp radius uh, compared to the the radius that we use when we just use the vise itself. So definitely a good investment. Here's that same 1 8 inch thick piece of steel that we just bent using the, uh, the vice brake. Let's say that we're not comfortable using the vice brake uh, beyond its capacity, but yet we still need to bend this 8 inch piece of steel. In this case, we can scribe a, a line here uh, where we'll burn a slot in there using our 4 and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. We'll, we'll leave some material on the ends. This will weaken the steel but it will create a very distinct bend line right along that area there. So our bend will be right where we want it. We'll still have material on the outside for stability. So I'm going to clamp it in my vise, get my angle grinder out, and I'm going to cut a slot precisely where that line was. <laughs> 
So now I've cut my slot, leaving some material left on the other end. Let's see if we can bend this by hand now that we have a significant slot in there. I'm going to put this in the vise like I did before with the top surface of the vise in line with about the center of the slot and clamp it down. It looks like I'm going to be able to go ahead and make this bend simply by hand. And if I remove this, I see I have a pretty good bend with a pretty good radius. Uh, the back side has an opening in it, and depending on the application of this uh, part, you can either leave that that way if you're not worried about aesthetics or if you like that look. If, uh, if this is a structural part where you need strength in there, we can fill that in nicely with a weld. So let's do that and see what it looks like. Once I lay that bead of weld in there, I'm giving the material most of its strength back, even penetrating on the inside. So what we end up here with is a nice part that once we clean up and paint, we can use without an expensive and large press brake. And see if I use my cleanup wheel my disc sander on that same uh, angle grinder, I can clean that bend up rather nicely and make it look just fine even after painting. Let's say back at the design stage you had the flexibility to do your own flat patterns. In this case using my 3D CAD system I can actually have a slot put in here prior to the cutting to, to make that bend much easier. Now I don't need to do my angle grinder with the cutoff wheel. I can simply have the slot put in in advance. In this case we got an eighth inch thick piece of steel and I got about a quarter of an inch of material on either side to stabilize it. The rest of it's removed. So in this situation I should be able to bend this over the edge of a table by hand. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to line up my bend line or my slot with the edge of the table nice and square. I'm just going to hold it down and make my bend not too bad. Let's take a look at just one more important topic and that is die clearance. If we look at the part on the left we see that the length of the flange sticking up is, is very tall compared to its base. When we try to bend this using a hydraulic brake or any other brake for that matter there's no way we can get our die in here for clearance. So when we try to make this bend this sheet metal will will not conform. We cannot make that bend because the height is too great compared to its width. So if we need to be mindful of that as we're designing parts. So in this case we need a 45 degree clearance plus some width for the die. So in this case where the height of the sides aren't quite as tall compared to the length of the base we can likely make that bend. Let's go back to the slotting technique to show you an example of bends that couldn't be made with an ordinary press brake. In this case, I'm going to make multiple bends along this line to form this piece into a rolled shape. And then I'm going to bend this bottom tab up from the bottom. And after we make the bends by hand, what we have here is a sheet metal bend uh, of a shape that we could not bend using uh, conventional dies. So using the slot meth method, we were able to make this part. And in this case, this is a cup holder for the bomb dicycle. Well, folks, that's it for today's tips. Check back to bombbuilds.com for more tips. And remember, whatever you're working on, have fun with your build.